All right, well, I'm gonna have, I'm recording this part again because my computer skills are horrible. But anyway, uh, it's been quite a day. <laughs> got a dog that's got a knot come up on her chest. We don't know what that is. We just found it. Ethan did. Big old, big old knot. I mean, I might post a picture of it. But uh, I'm out here with the pigs. They're fighting. I just added some apple cider vinegar to their feed. It's still got the mother in it. Uh, they seem to like it. But it helps with... Uh, it's supposed to help. I don't know. I don't have any experience. We're going to find out. It's, it's supposed to help in a lot of ways. It's supposed to help them grow better, put on weight better. And it's supposed to help... Whoop, got my hand in the way. Uh, it's supposed to help get rid of parasites. So we're going to give them some and see what happens. Okay, I'm going to show you this again. I don't know. Now, none of the videos I think I got, I've shown it. Just, but anyway, that right there used to be just like this right here. Full of poison ivy and blackberry briars and stick tights and then pigs have ate just about all of the blackberry briars at least the leaves off of them and the poison ivy the grass they've just stomped down or rooted up they haven't ate it eaten it <laughs> i don't know if that's good grammar or not but anyway i just it's amazing that's just a little over 24 hours you know they started out over here you know they've been in there for Oh, about three months now, which they're not going to be here that long. I think I've decided that uh, I'm going to go ahead. All right. I'm going to go ahead and start moving them at least once a week, if not sooner. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's just better for the pigs and definitely be better for my land. So we're going to start doing that probably by the weekend you know, maybe friday maybe sooner depending on how much work wears me out but uh it was a pretty easy move yesterday we just uh put up the two extra panels now it probably will be next friday i gotta get some more panels but anyway we put up the two extra panels fed them took the end out moved up so anyway hit that like button and subscribe because I'm running out of time okay <laughs> I'm gonna try this one more time uh, I'm gonna start all over I had a bunch recorded there and then ran out of space on my phone uh, I'm going back and forth in <laughs> these recording devices and it's, they're frustrating me. But anyway, I was, this video I'm about to talk about, I, I got it the way I want it, but uh, I was talking about as I walked away, I switched from the back camera to the front camera or whatever. Uh, I mean, anyway, enough of my technical difficulties but uh i was saying how that i'm gonna start moving them pigs uh and i, I mentioned it before i think in a video but i think in last night's video i said something about it but i i just saw what they've done and uh i i think that's gonna be a good idea to move them at least once a week you know, I may have to move them more often than that. But, uh, at least until we get our big fence put in, the big pen built. Uh, I think it'll be better for, for them and their health. And, uh, be better, be better on my property here. And, you know, um, they, they'll get rid of those, the unwanted stuff. And they'll put some fertilizer down behind them. Just, just a good idea. 
And also, I don't know if I mentioned, I'm sure I didn't mention it on the video where I was showing the grass and what they've done to it, or the, the weeds. They haven't hurt. The only thing they've done to the grass there so far is just kind of stomp it down. But man, they went to town on them blackberry briars and stick tights and uh, the poison ivy. I, I'm amazed. I <laughs> just, you know. Uh, before, you know, by the time I got involved with pigs as a kid, uh, Dad already had an established pen, and it, it was one of them moonscape deals. There were no dirts, and all the rocks had been rooted down the hill at the bottom, and, you know, I'm going to try to avoid some of that. I don't have to worry about rocks up here. Any rocks that are up here are either way deep or, or they've been imported, so... Not so worried about rocks. I just don't want them digging big holes and things, you know. So we're going to be moving them and it's going to be better. But anyway, I also just started tonight adding apple cider vinegar to their feed. Uh, that's supposed to help their, their growth, their weight gain, you know. Plus, it helps with parasites. So, or supposed to, that's what they say. I've read quite a bit on it lately, and there's quite a bit of evidence out there that says so. So I'm going to go with it and see what happens. Uh, I had a, some other stuff in this video, but somehow I was messing around the computer, and I don't know, I fell asleep, or I had a twitch, or, you know, my shaky fingers. I don't know. But I lost everything that I did on my phone earlier today. So, uh, I don't know what this is going to look like tonight, but we're going to try to get it done. Uh, me and Ethan are supposed to go do something here in a little bit. We'll see if that happens. And We'll try to get some video from that, but if we do, that'll be in tomorrow's video. So, it's Saturday right now when I recorded all this, and, you know, I don't know, I may not get this done today, uh, with the luck I'm having with computers and phones and cameras and everything else. But anyway, uh, hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and, uh, oh, a little hummingbird wanted to buzz through, boom, there they go again. Yep, that's what's buzzing behind my head there. Let's see if I can get a picture of them this way. There's the feeder. There's one. Oh, there's another one coming and chased it off, too. They get pretty. <laughs> they they seem, get, get a little bit violent looking sometimes, it seems to me. But anyway, uh, I guess I ought to wrap this up. So I can get in there and start editing, and I wanted to try some stuff. You know, I was done with all this. I don't know, about 3.30, I thought I had all the video I needed for today, so I was trying to get it done early. So I could try some new stuff on these videos, but it's not how it goes with me. So, oh, and we got a dog that Ethan just went out there and fed, and one of our hounds, his hound to be specific, and she's got a big old knot on her chest. I mean, you know, it's probably two inches wide, two and a half, three inches high. And it's firm. I'll probably put a picture in here somewhere. But, uh, I don't know. I put some feelers out to some people, see if they know what it was before we take her to a vet. She's still acting good. She's up, moving around, and, you know, seems healthy and happy. You know, it's the same one that, you know, we had a problem with her before she lost a bunch of weight and we couldn't get weight put on her. I mentioned it before. Changed dog food and almost within a week she starts putting in, putting on weight. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there. I was using Purina dog chow and, and I've used it for years and never had a problem at all. And of course this dog here seems to be a little high strung. She just, she paces a lot. She's you know, always moving. But anyway, last winter, you know, I mentioned before I lost one dog, and we, the, me and the vet, 
you know, we didn't do any testing because I couldn't afford it. And he said that, you know, the, even if we were wrong, the treatment for it is relatively inexpensive and it won't hurt them if that's not it. Well, like I said, we had two dogs left that we took up there for that. And uh, the one, she just, of course, I think she wasn't as far advanced as what Tammy was. Timmy, T-E-M-M-I-E. -E. I don't know if you're a anime person, you might know that, but that's what Ethan named her. But anyway, uh, and she just wouldn't gain weight, wouldn't gain weight. We went through the treatment again with her, and she still wouldn't gain weight, wouldn't gain weight. And uh, I was listening to the Houndsman XP podcast, and you know, they had a veterinarian on there that races sled dogs. And, you know, his suggestion was high protein dog food all the time. You know, I think like 20% protein, 30% fat, something like that. And uh, I'm watching a little hummingbird there. It's the closest I've ever been to one. But anyway, uh, squirrel. Uh, you know, so I switched to purine and dog to high protein. Well, that still didn't seem to help much. So I, you know, I'm starting to develop a thing about Walmart. I just, you know, they, they keep making these decisions that I don't care for. And it, it's been building up for a while. I'm just, you know, they're too big as well. They've got too much market share, in my opinion. Anyway, enough about Walmart. So I couldn't find anything else with that higher protein. Mm -hmm. Well, they had the, the dog chow high protein, and it still wasn't that high. So, like I said, I'm trying to find alternative sources to, to Wally World. So I asked at the MFA feed store there where I buy my feed in Lamar if they had any high protein dog food. And I'm going to run out of time again here. Uh... So, you're going to see an awkward clip. Anyway, they said, yeah, we got some. It's going to be, it's $32 a bag. And, well, I didn't buy it then. But anyway, come find out. I was paying just as much. So, I started buying it there. And within a week of putting her on that dog food, she started gaining weight. So, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it's her genetic makeup or what. But I'll be right back. Okay, so I switched dog food. She starts gaining weight. But earlier this year, she came up with these great big just sores on her back. And it looked like the skin was sliding off. Well, we treated it with some antibiotic spray and treated it. And, you know, I made sure that she had some shade to get in because I was wondering if it, she hadn't got sunburned. So and we that's about healed up. And it, it just, it's healing more and more every day. Just got a small spot left now. But now, today, Ethan finds his big knot. Just, you know, I already described it. And my first impulse before I saw it was that it was, she'd been bitten by a snake. But I don't see any puncture marks or anything like that. So, like I said, we've been, I got some feelers out to see, you know, what somebody might, a few people might think about it. It's got a little bit of knowledge. On that kind of stuff. One of them's got a lot of knowledge when it comes to dogs and wounds and different things. You know, he's, he's been coon hunting since he was a little bitty kid and uh, he's my age. And I mean, he's he's hunted hard and had lots and lots of dogs and, you know, worked with a lot of dogs. And, you know, so he might, I'm waiting on him to see if he's got a good idea. May end up taking her to the vet. I don't know. She's still acting happy and normal, and she's not acting sick. She's eating. She's drinking, you know, good stools, all that kind of stuff. So not real concerned yet. And, uh, you know, <laughs> anyway, so we'll see on that. But uh, uh, so I guess that's all I got. I already talked more here than I intended on. I just intended on jumping on here real quick and closing this out and moving on. But I decided I'd share that with you. Um, I'll probably pop in a picture there. 
towards the end of this. Uh, I don't know. I, that's going to test my editing skills. Anyway, so hit that like button, subscribe. You know, let's all look out for each other, try to help each other. And uh, let's pray for each other. Uh, it's, it's important. And that's something that's sorely needed right now. So we'll catch you later.